For much of the War of Independence 1919 to 1921, Cumann was an illegal organisation, a time in which its Westmead members gathered intelligence, carried dispatches and provided safe houses for the local IRA. In much of the country, Cumann tended to be strongest in regions where the IRA was also strong. In Westmead, this meant that Cumann was most active in the western half of the county, extending into South Roscommon. In some instances, members of Cumann had brothers who were prominent members of the local IRA. For example, Mary Claffey of Castle Daly was an organiser for Cumann and two of her siblings were members of the Loan Brigade's Flying Column. As with the county's IRA, in which a core of members drove brigade activities such as the Flying Column, Cumann in Westmead relied on a relatively small group of active members. Cumann also played a prominent role in local political events such as Lawrence Gunnell's visit to Atlone in 1919, as well as during a visit to the town by a delegation of Irish-American politicians that same year. Bridget Reynolds, as president of Cumann in Atlone, provided speeches on both occasions, telling Gunnell that, as our forefather stood on the old bridge that a Sassnock and tyrant could not pass, it is with you that we, the women of Cousin, stand in the same old fight. Such public demonstrations and speeches became illegal after November 1919, when Cumann was banned. During the remainder of the War of Independence, Cumann members were forced to work mostly in secret. In Westmead, Reynolds and others engaged in activities such as dispatch carrying, the provision of medical care and intelligence work. Unfortunately, many of the details of Cumann's work were never recorded, particularly with regard to intelligence gathering. This makes it difficult to quantify the extent to which Cumann doubled as an intelligence service. Although according to many later accounts, witness statements, pension files, newspaper articles, it was one of the Westmead IRA's few successful sources of intelligence, and its members were routinely tasked with ferrying documents between IRA battalions. Patrick Lennon, a member of the IRA's at Lone Brigade, named Nellie Galvin, Sissy Tully and a Miss Connolly as particularly important to the IRA in the Summerhill and Athlone areas. He said, They often carried dispatches for us and were able to get through hold-ups and cordons of the enemy. Mary Halligan of Carrick near Athlone was another who took on this role, as did her sister. According to Mary's obituary in the Westmead Independent in 1954, she was a most active member of Cumann who risked her life on many occasions carrying dispatches. At times, Cumann members were deployed as scouts, and Bridget Reynolds later stated that, in October 1920, she helped volunteers escape capture by the Crown forces after an IRA unit had attacked a military patrol boat on the Shannon. Annie O'Connor, noted for her skills as an organiser, was someone whom the Athlone Brigade relied upon to gather intelligence transport weapons and scout enemy forces. Such work carried substantial risk and Agnes Shortle, a well-known local member of Cumann, later described going on the run for six months in 1921, a period during which her health was permanently damaged. Cumann also aided the IRA by providing safe houses and medical care. Mary Halligan, apart from carrying dispatches, provided shelter for those on the run in her home where they were ever sure of a welcome and a safe harbour from the enemy. Another safe house was provided in Tang by Mary McLaughlin. Mary joined the Tang branch of Cumann in early 1921, subsequently attending first aid lectures and raising funds. Until the truce on the 11th of July 1921, her house was frequently used by IRA volunteers. When necessary, she provided food and first aid, stored weapons and carried dispatches. Mary McLaughlin's training in first aid was common to all members of Cumann. In Athlone, Eilish O'Brien, a leading member of the local Red Cross, provided medical care to IRA volunteers, as did Bridget Reynolds. Among Reynolds' most notable patients was George Adamson, after he'd been badly wounded in 1921. Their stories are some of the many stories from Westmead and the Midlands, which are being explored by Westmead County Council and a historian in residence, Ian Kennelly. Westmeath Historian in Residence is supported by the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gwail Talk to Sport and Media's Decade of Centenaries program. Follow Ian Kennelly's blogs on westmeathcoco.ie slash decade of centenaries. This infomercial is supported by the Creative Ireland program and Westmeath County Council. <laughs>